back to Choose Life. I'm your host, Gina Coleman. So yeah, I wanted to come on to make a video to encourage us. Um, if this is your first time passing by, go ahead and like and subscribe to Choose Life, where we make, make choices to choose life every day. So today, I just wanted to just to come on and encourage us to choose love. At doing, during this time, choose to love, choose to love. And you know, um, what I'm finding out in this time of being away with the Lord and even with all the chaos that's going on, I'm finding out that the word of God has to be an intentional thing that we do. It's not enough just to read it. It has to be put in practice intentionally. Um, we have to see the situations where the Lord um, has allowed to happen so that we can intentionally put the word in practice. And you know, the more we put the word in practice and the more we be, um, the more we put the word in practice, the more we'll begin to live by it. Um, I know that this may sound a little strange to some people, but um, we're in a great, great time. And what I mean by that is so much stuff has happened that we have never seen before. There has been many protests in the past for the many injustices that we have suffered as a people. But this time it's different. Um, as we've seen on social media and even the news, um, every state has joined in a protest. And even those in other countries have joined in a protest. Um, God has is, is doing something in the hearts of people. He's doing something in the hearts of people. I'm trying to stop myself from crying. But the Lord is doing something in the hearts of people. Many people see what has happened is, is an injustice. And they've decided to march to it in the peaceful protest for what really is righteousness. It's, it's righteousness to come together in agreement um, at some unrighteousness that happened. And only God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is able to move on millions of people's hearts to come together for this. So this is why I say it's a great time. It's also a great time because um, we've seen police officers speak out of, you know, of the injustice. We've seen um, police officers kneel. We've seen police officers hug. Um, we've seen the, the vulnerability of police officers. We've seen the kindness of police officers, um, which, which as a people, we haven't seen that in a long time. Right. So um, this is why I say it's a great time. So but I also want to encourage us in this great time to remember who we are and what our assignment is during this difficult time. And our assignment in this difficult time is to choose to love. We must choose to love. We must choose to love all of those people who um, demonstrate hate towards us. Um, Martin Luther King, there's a quote from Martin Luther King that says, hate cannot drive out hate, but only love. Well, actually, that's the scripture. Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. That's basically what he was saying. And not even what he was saying, That was that's the word of God. And so if you and I want to see um, what the Lord is going to do in this earth, you and I must stay in love. We must focus on loving those that don't love us. We must pray for those that hate us. We must um, just really cry out unto God for those that just don't really care whether we live or die. But as sons of God, our position is love. And I know that because it's been so much chaos going on, so much chaos going on, you know, we get caught up in our emotions 
um, because no matter where you turn, it's in your face. If you come off social media and you're trying to just go over to YouTube and watch something great, it's over there. If you're um, just saying, I'm going to watch something on TV, this breaking news is over there. And it can and it does affect our emotions. But I want to encourage you to not allow it to affect your emotions as best as you can or process your emotions. Go and talk to the Lord. Go and talk to some people about what you're feeling. And, um, well, so God can help you <laughs> so that we can be helped. So we already know that the Bible says that yet in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. And so then the Lord begins to tell us what the most excellent way is. You see, the funny thing is, when people mistreat us, we want to take revenge and we want to stop loving them. But the truth of the matter is we were them before we um, accepted Christ. We may have had some prejudices, um, you know, against other races, but we also may have and may still have prejudices against, <laughs> against each other. And so God is saying the most excellent way is to love. Because because when it, even this is all over, what if we still have prejudice in our heart towards a sibling, towards a brother, or sister in Christ, right? So he said, I'm telling you how to get out of this thing. How to get out of get out of this thing is you are going to have to love. You see, God loved us and he still loves us. When we were acting just like them, we may not have um, protested anything. We may not have rioted anything. And we may not have killed anyone. Not with our hands, but with our mouths. We have murdered some people. We have hated some people. Is that my lace? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I was going to be my real self on this thing, right? So, anyway... God wants us to practice this love walk. So I'm just going to read the scripture. We all know it, but the Lord wants us to practice loving like he loves. So it says, if, if I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the faith, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom only mysteries and knowledge I had to put my glasses on, y'all. Um, if I have the gift of prophecies and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not enemy. Envy. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily anger. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice in the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. Always persevere. Love never fails. So we know this scripture and, and we've heard it. We've read it. We pray it. But God is saying to us, what's going to cause peace to come to you and I um excuse me what's going to cause peace I got hair in my eye what's going to cause the peace to come to you and I it's going to be that we pray and that we intentionally set our hearts to love that we're going to have to love because the truth of the matter is when all of this is over when everything has um, settled because I don't think it's ever going to be over but when it has settled, God is going to open the doors of his church again, all the way for everyone. And he's going to send people to the house of God to um, be healed. So you and I, as the sons of God, are going to have to have this principle of love down pat. Because what if somebody comes in and begin to tell us their stories on how they abuse somebody black or 
and, and but they're coming to repent. Are we going to be able to sit before them without taking offense? Are we going to be able to hear this story without taking it personal? Right? So I felt the need to come on and tell us that me too. I'm not just saying you, we need to like really get rooted and grounded in our love and not even just for these group of people, but what about our family members? What about our coworkers? What about it? What about them? We have to practice love. So the principle that you and I are choosing today and choosing to uh, pray about it, to reiterate it, to um, encourage ourselves is that we're going to love those that don't love us because God loved us when we didn't love him. And because we want to be like our father and because it's a command that we be like him, that we would be separate and that we would be holy like him, we're going to have to choose to love. So I want to encourage you to pray this scripture, uh, meditate on this scripture, because who knows um, if you and I will ever have an encounter with somebody that doesn't love us, how are we going to handle it, right? I've had a couple of experiences with um, being called a nigger. I don't really say the N-word. I, I, I'm going to say the word, right? Because they don't call me an N-word. They say the word, right? So the first time, I may have said this before, the first time I didn't handle it well. I mean, I didn't. A couple of the, I had it like maybe three times. Two times I didn't handle it well. The last time I did handle it well. I laughed it off. Because between the time that they called me that, the first two times they called me that, and the last time they called me that, I, I had met Christ. I had come into a place of knowing, call me what you want. I am not that. And I have to um, know who I am, even if somebody calls me that, right? We, we're only affected if they call us that, if, if we have not gotten to the place of knowing who we are, right? Because people are going to call you what they want to call you. Even some of your own brothers and sisters in body of Christ have some opinions of you that are not who you are. And they've made up in their mind that this is how you are. And maybe you'll, they'll speak it out or we'll, you know, we speak out stuff. But the thing that's going to keep you and I safe as far as in our, in our minds is when somebody calls us out, out of our name, if we should have an experience, God forbid, um, that we're going to have to know who we are. And we're going to have to love them through this stuff, even though we're the ones that's affected. Do you ever think about how God was so affected? He, the Lord was affected and is affected by our mistreatment of him and mistreatment of each other, but he still loves us through it, right? And so the Lord has given us that same grace, not just for everyday life to love people, but when life gets like this, when life is so difficult and life is so chaotic and life is so hard and you and I being the ones that's attacked, he's still given us the grace to do it. He's given us the grace to get through this. And the way we're going to get through it is we're going to pray without ceasing. We're going to on purpose, love people on purpose, love people because God said, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the bottom line. And we have to determine I'm sticking to it. That's the bottom line. And there's nothing I can do but to follow the word of God. And I'm not telling you that you, you and I have to be so um, strong emotionally, so Whatever I'm saying that we just have to work it out before we come into the public. We, we just have to work it out because we're the lights of the world. We're the ambassadors of Christ. And you and I have to be that at all times. We have to be that at all times. We have to be like Jesus when they, they were persecuting him. He didn't focus on what they were doing to him. He focused on the assignment that the Lord has given him and through that had given him and through that victory for you and I was won and through our obedience to love to forgive to extend mercy we will win some people to us because believe it or not people are always 
watching the sons of God, whether they tell you or not. They're watching. Some are watching to see if you are who you say you are. Some are watching because the Lord has them watching you because he's going to send them to you sooner or later for prayer, for something. So you and I have to stand strong. We have to work our stuff out behind closed doors and not in the public. Right? So I, as I always say, you and I have the grace to stand at one of the most difficult times in life. If we could not do it, the Lord would not allow us to be here. So while everything seems, seems like it's falling apart and seems like it's, it's just going crazy, know that God is with us. I mean, we've got to get to the place where we know God is with us and he's for us. He's for us. He's for us. He is for us. And he's demonstrate, he's demonstrated that he's for us by causing nations and people to come and stand and say, nope, this cannot happen anymore. We're against this treatment of humanity, of a human being. We're against this treatment. So brush up on your love. Practice your love. I mean, because remember, we may not have been an extremist in our hatred, but we have hated some people. We have, even if you dislike some people, like, you know, people say, I don't like, I don't hate nobody. I just strongly dislike what is hate, right? God forgave us and um, he wants us to represent him here in the earth. So if you have to take a break, away from social media so that you can be strong, then do it. If you have to take a break away from the news, then do it. If you have to spend days just in the word of God, then do it. Um, so that you can be strong enough to help perhaps one of those people who don't like you, one of those people that hate you, right? If Jesus can do it, he's given us the grace and the power to be able to do it. So the principle that we're choosing today is that we're going to choose the love. And just before I close out in prayer, in prayer, I want to tell you that you know how the word of God, you just keep hearing it over and over and over again. Um, people, different, different people may preach it from a different angle. There's no new word. So God ministers the same word to us, different angle, so we can stay on top so that it can get inside of us because he knows when it's, when it's surface or when it's really inside of us. So I want to encourage you to work your stuff out, work your emotions, work your feelings, work your anger, work your stuff out with the Lord so that when the Lord fills his house with broken, confused, sad, whites, blacks, Hispanics, uh, Chinese, whatever other <laughs> race, God would, uh, that we would be ready to receive them. So I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for every person that's watching this video. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that today we are choosing to choose love. Lord, help us to love like you commanded us to love. We thank you for that grace to love that way, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, to help every last one of us that have viewed this video or that will view this video, but yet we struggle with our own emotions because of what has been going on around us, Lord. I ask that you would heal us, Lord God, and make sense out of what's going on around us um, as individuals and, you know, as people, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would dry our tears, speak a word that would encourage us speak life unto us father in the name of jesus god we thank you that we are here to be able to see what you're doing here in the earth lord god we thank you lord god that even though sometimes people in the world forget about us god we cannot you 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 cannot forget us so i pray for each person that will view this video lord god in the name of jesus that they will realize the strength that's within them because you allow them to be to uh, be alive rather at this one of the most difficult times Lord God where there's trauma on top of trauma. Father I ask that you would show them their strength and I ask you to also keep us all protected from the COVID still as we're still in the midst of the pandemic and as we're still in the midst of, uh, of, uh, of the death of George Floyd Lord God and 
the other deaths of Brianna and Ahmad, Lord God, we just ask you that you would keep us strong, Lord God, and that, um, Lord God, that we would just tap into the joy of the Lord, that we would be strengthened. Lord, I thank you that when we're weak, then that's when you become strong for us, Father. So today, God, we surrender our thoughts unto you, and we ask you to help us to have the right thoughts in the name of Jesus, as our emotions may be all over the board, Lord God, just everywhere. We just ask you to help us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I, I just pray, God, that you would bless every single person. And even in this time, Lord God, I pray that we would not be so distracted by what the enemy is doing and giving him all the power and, and that, that we forget what you're doing, Father. So I ask that you bless each person, keep them safe, keep them strong. And Father, I pray that we don't miss what you're doing in this season. In Jesus name. Amen. So, um, most of the people that subscribe to my page, I know. So I just want to tell you that I love you, that I'm praying that you would be strong. And I ask that you would pray for me that I will be strong because at times like this, you know, it wears on you a little bit, right? So also I want to encourage you to find something that makes you happy during this time. Find something. Like I said, I'm finding that in this in, in this season of being um, um, in the house, I'm finding that if I want something, I have to be intentional about it. If I want peace, I have to be intentional about keeping my mind on the Lord. If I want joy, I have to be intentional about keeping my mind on the Lord. I have to, you have to be intentional in the things of life. <laughs> So I lost my train of thought, but thank you for watching and choose to love. Choose to love. The kingdom of God is ran by love and that we love God so much that we want to live in righteousness and in peace and in joy of the Holy Ghost. So God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Bye.